Today we're going to talk about six rules of composition that I believe will drastically improve your photography. Hi, I'm Joel Grimes. I am a commercial advertising photographer and been doing this for well over 35 years. And I'm also an educator and I love talking about photography. We're going to talk about six basic rules of composition that I believe, as applied to your photography, will drastically improve it. And so that's what I'm all about is making better pictures. I love it. In fact, I love the photography as much today as I did when I started 40 years ago. So let's talk about the basic rules of composition. Now my job is to make things simple. I like to break things down and so I don't know if you've ever felt a little bit overwhelmed when you start looking at things like the rules of lighting, the rules of composition, or whatever has a sort of been an established a set of guidelines. And so I think it's important to learn those guidelines and uh, then once you know them, you can always go and break them. So the old adage is uh, rules are made to be broken. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more. So if you feel a little bit overwhelmed when you start seeing all these, um, we have these sort of like these, these patterns of, of if you look up rules of composition and you say, oh my gosh, there's too many I can't remember. Well, we're going to break it down to six I think are the most powerful ones. And if you get these, you can pretty much, uh, you know, apply them to your photography. Let's take a look at a definition. And I always like to start with that because that's going to be our anchor point. So I believe the rules of composition are based on directing your viewer's attention to a specific point of interest. Now, once we understand that, then you'll understand what I'm going to get at. So we're going to talk about how you can take and force your viewer's attention toward a specific point. And that's what the rule of the compositions uh, allow you to do. So here we have uh, a picture that I took years ago um, of an Olympic uh, diver. And you can see here, I'm just going through a quick little uh, you know, just showing you grid patterns of some of the things that we're going to talk about. Now, um, when it comes to a, uh, let's say, setting your subject into a background, or if you're doing even a landscape, whatever it is, it is subjective, meaning that you as an artist are the one that determines where that point of interest should be. Now, you may show that to someone and say, I don't get it. My eye is going over here. That could be true. Then you have to look at that and say, did I do something wrong? How can I draw my uh, a viewer's eye to a, a specific point of interest? Once you understand that, these rules actually make a lot of sense. So as I say, there's no rules that, especially rules of composition that are etched in stone. So one of the most important things that I would say when it comes to applying a, a composition or putting your subject in a background, or even working with a landscape, is that your intuition is really your best guide. And I talk about this when, I, when we talk about lighting, is that ultimately, because you're an artist, you wanna do what fits you, your vision, what you like. If you come up with something and you say, I really like it, and it breaks the rules, it's okay. You're the artist, remember, that the most important person to please is ultimately you. Now, if you work for a client, you may have some basic guidelines. If you're working with a copy in the advertising industry, you have to make room for certain things. Uh, but I want to be able to produce an image that I feel like works for me, my vision as an artist. This isn't very important. I talk about branding yourself in the marketplace because you have something to offer the world and your intuition is really your best guide. So most images are going to end up using multiple different rules of composition all at one time. We're going to talk a little bit about that. So you'll see that when I use the rule of thirds, I'm also using the rule of triangles or another whatever one of the rules, okay? Force perspective or uh, converging lines. They work together. So it's not like you have one rule applies to uh, each photograph, multiple different things are happening at one time. Sometimes it gets a little complicated, but it's really fun once you start understanding these basic rules. I have put together an ebook that you can download, that you can put on your iPhone, iPad, or computer that 
talks about the basic rules of composition. You could always have it as a reference. It's going to be there for you free. All you have to do is uh, click on that link below and it'll direct you where you can download it. I love giving out these ebooks for people. And so that is there for you. So if you hopefully watch this video all the way through, but you can always just go and download that video right now if you want. So we're going to talk about six basic rules that I think you should know. And these are kind of what I have come up with. One of the things that I always talk about, we know, we're going to talk about the rule of thirds here in a minute, but I wanted to start out with what I think is a uh, one of the basic rules of composition I use all the time. I use the rule of thirds a lot too, but the rules of triangles. Now, you may not even have thought about this, and I don't hear a lot of people talking about it, but I use it all the time. And you'll see, I'm going to show you some examples of how simple it is to think about the rules of triangles. So I position my athletes, I use their face, I use the backgrounds. Now there's a little bit of converging lines in here too. Um, this is a dead on center uh, portrait, but really look at all these triangles that are happening here with, our, with my photograph. This is intentional. This is thought out. I'm thinking about that when I have the athlete put his hands. In fact, even the, the football, in a way, creates a triangle pointing up toward his face. So what is his, uh, what is the point of interest? Well, it's my, I'm a photographer that does portraits. It's the face. So here's a triangle. It's not a perfect triangle. Remember, when you look at this, it's, a, it's the shape of the of two points of, of interest going to one point of interest. That's how a triangle is, is worked. So it's the two point of, of interest that anchors your uh, one side of the triangle and then the one point is what it forces it to do. You'll see here there uh, is another one here. So I have a rapper, a musician, a rule of thirds applies there, but look at how he's the anchor, two points of, uh, of um, of anchor interest going into the car, pushing it away. So we'll still see another one here. Um, so we've got, uh, uh, again, I'm using the rules of thirds all the time, but there you go. There, look at the triangle coming across the car. Look at the triangles that are happening here. You'll find triangles in everything once you start looking. It's actually kind of fun. Uh, maybe go back to your images and you can see some or look at other images, but triangles are always happening. So here's the body shape going into the face, and then the face is also a triangle, the eyes down to the, the mouth. So triangles, triangles, triangles happening everywhere. Um, I'm always thinking about triangles. So we'll take a look here. The sky in the, in the stadium is a triangle. She's shaped like a triangle with her two points of interest to her face. Here's a, the, the stands over here are pointing toward her. We've got triangles also to the left. I didn't put those in there. Even the birds are creating a triangle pointing toward her. I didn't put that in there in the red. But um, anyways, triangles make you uh, force your, your viewers into a certain direction. So here's an athlete jumping, um, got him set up in the rule of thirds, but look at he's shaped like uh, a triangle. I mean, he fits within a triangle. That is not an accident, folks. Now, when he's jumping, I didn't say jump into a triangle, but I'm watching him jump. I'm asking him to do certain things. And then I'm looking at my monitor and I go, yes, I have a triangle. His body is shaped like a triangle. I'm using a wide angle lens, stretching the perspective there. And so that's what I love doing. And here we have Karan Clemens, gold medalist. Um, here's the triangle there, triangle on his face. We got triangles coming from the stands in the background. Uh, in the sky, actually, I could have raised that uh, anchor point up a little bit more. But anyways, triangles everywhere. Once you start thinking of triangles, you will see them uh, in your photographs. Remember this. You are pushing your viewer, their interest towards something that you want them to. So that's not that difficult. You'll see it in everything. So let's talk about number two, rule of third. Now, this, you've probably heard this. You've, you've, you've um, um, obviously, uh, that's probably the most basic uh, a rule that we hear all the time. I've overused this rule of thirds um, over the years. Uh, because I think that's the first rule that you know, you're taught when you're in photography. So here we have the rule of thirds. You can see that my coordinate over here, the top coordinate is goes to his eye. Um, and then um, we have the 
uh, street scene coming down, you'll see a triangle in there. I think I added that triangle. Oh, I guess I didn't. Oh, there it is. Look at the triangle going toward him. All sorts of things happening here. We have a um, converging lines happening too. There's a triangle in the sky. Um, so, I love this. The, again, once you start seeing this, you'll um, definitely uh, start applying it to your photograph. So here we have the rule of thirds, and then we have a triangle on the floor, the force perspective, back to that little, whatever that is, gazebo back there. Um, and so then she's got an S curve on her body. I'm no genius, folks, at this, but over the years, I've been practicing this. Here's an ad campaign I did. Rule of thirds, there we have him positioned up there. The ball is over here, and actually, um, you can um, see a triangle there too. And there's a, the stands in the background, the, the stadium is creating a triangle too. All right, here's an image that I posted on, uh, just for an ad campaign, but I posted it on my social media. Uh, half the people said I was a really lousy photographer and half the people said I was just genius. I did purposely chop his head off because I want him to be jumping out of the frame. But you can see he's set up in the rule of thirds. And there's also a triangle between both his feet and the ball uh, uh, or his body. Again, triangles, rule of thirds, converging lines. All these things are happening at one time. I love it. I love it. All right. Rule number three, symmetry, or I often call it balancing form. So let's talk about that. So here we have a uh, SWAT uh, guy, and he's dead center in the frame. I love centering my subjects. Then I love to counter the center subject with balancing form, balancing things. So here he is, dead center. He's the main subject. I love dead center. It's something that I've always liked. Now, I was taught in photography school, don't dead center your subject. Well, um, again, rules are to be broken. But you can see that I often balance my uh, dead center subject with um, opposing uh, elements. And here we have uh, these two guys. Uh, we could do it with, I could have done it with two guys, um, dead center, and then, or maybe put him to the left and then do the triangle to the, to the left or right, either side. But dead center, you want to balance. And there's a lot of things going on here too with converging lines and things like that. There's a triangle between the three heads. Um, converging lines, we'll talk about that in a minute. So keep in mind, lots of things going on at one time. Dead center, subject. So here's um, her with the larger subject on the bottom and then a top there's her head sort of balancing on top of each other and then look at the triangles my goodness they're everywhere this takes years of practice folks but it's something you should be thinking about so here we have a subject dead center all right and we have opposing elements, her arms, uh, her coat, her hair. It's all balancing out to make a, what I call a very beautiful symmetrical uh, uh, shape. Now there's the triangle there too, a little bit, forcing you up to her head. Now here's a, a portrait that I did. And when I sat him down originally, I probably would have started out maybe with the rule of thirds, when he sat down, we were raging this up. All of a sudden, I saw all these elements that were balancing him, so I put him dead center. There he is. So look at the elements that are balancing. The, all these old engines here. You got a big toolbox over here or something on the bottom. You got things balancing. Everything's balanced. And so then he sits nicely in that. And it's sort of like a circle around him, too that's happening. Here we have a picture of a beautiful model 
and she's dead center. There's the circles. Also, we have a, a triangle on her face and then a triangle set up from the bottom going up. Anchoring to a point away from the anchor. Dead center. And then we have what I think are basic elements, you know, the rocks, the, the lines behind there, sort of balancing out the overall image. I always talk about how dramatic the lighting is that helps make and sell this image. So, I hope there's another triangle. Ho! Oh, triangles everywhere. You're going to start dreaming of triangles here soon. Uh, Karan Clemens, the gold medalist again. Here we go. So let's take a look. He's dead center. And this is also, I talk about, a optical um, perspective that happens, a, a force perspective that happens with a wide-angle lens. So her, his head is bigger than in perspective than his feet because the lens does that. Um, I like that. I know some people don't. But here we have him with these... Uh, this Sapovia Dam outside of LA. There's my triangle. All these things happening at one time. All right, let's talk about number four. Leading lines or forced perspective. Of course, you have probably taught this too. And here we have rapper um, a Mustafa, actor. He's an actor also. But look at all those lines forcing you to him. Um, this is, uh, I use all the time. This is sort of my trademark when it comes to athletes, is finding a, a situation where I can have leading lines forcing them into um, uh, the viewer to force their eye attention to them. Oh, another triangle. Number five, foreground dominance or stretch perspective. We, we talked a little bit about stretch, stretch perspective here. So I love this bold, in-your-face um, style of portraits. Love it. Um, and so I use it over and over again. Dead center, and there's no question. Look at all the lines of the agave for forcing your attention to her. This is offset a little bit, but still bold, and then you have um, the other three people, and of course we have um, Part of the uh, casino over there balancing um, out the, the perspective there. And then, of course, there's the triangle with the, uh, the faces and everything, the bodies and the faces. A lot of CEOs or people that I want to look very, uh, like, powerful, I use a wide-angle lens and I have them cross their arms. I put them dead center and... Uh, it works very well. Here's Mustafa again, uh, and his coat is also a triangle. But look at all the force perspectives, uh, things that are happening there. He's dead center. All right, so let's go to number six, eliminating clutter. So this is something that I want to talk about because if you look at my pictures, you'll notice, and this is not in every case, but I try to minimize the clutter in my photographs. And in some cases, you just can't do it. You do an environmental portrait with all the, the motors inside that one um, kind of a shed that I photographed that one guy in. That's, there's a lot of stuff going on there. But as a general rule, what I want to do with my photographs is make them simple. Now, working in the advertising arena for 35 years is that you have about two to three seconds to win over your audience. And so you don't want to have too much clutter or things that are drawing your attention from where you want that or to the subject or wherever that um, the direction you want people to go. So you got to go and eliminate clutter. And so this is something that I'm constantly trying to do. And, and again, I'm no genius at, the, genius at this, but I work at it very hard. So here we have a cowboy horse. When I um, scouted this location, I knew the sun was going to be setting coming from the right so i'm facing north north it depends on what time of year but north basically sun is setting and then i set the cowboy 
in the field. I know exactly where I want to put them and I'm looking for as little as clutter as possible. And that helps my viewers go straight to uh, the subject. Here's a, a studio shot with a background, but again, very simple, very clean, and um, uh, as little clutter as possible. So here's a, this Harley series I did. Um, I'm strobing the bike. Um, I talk all about that in the Jewel Grimes Academy, but um, again, drawing you in to a subject, but not clutter. Now we got bricks and all that stuff here, but it's nothing's really drawing you away from that bike. Again, white backgrounds make for beautiful, um, clean. And I do a lot on white, by the way. I love models or even athletes. I have them jumping in the air with uh, uh, the sun, simulating sun and all that stuff. So here we have um, a tunnel, very simple. It's not complicated. It's, it's making you draw straight to the subject. We're using uh, converging lines and all these things here, um, but um, simple, clean, minimizing clutter. That's how you go and win over your audience. So learning great composition takes a lot of practice. That's the number one thing that I would, I would hope to uh, get you guys. I've been doing this for so long that I, a lot of these things just happen. Later I look and I go, oh, wow, I didn't realize, but I used a triangle here, I used a converging line here, whatever. I'm not just every time I go, I'm you know, pulling out uh, my six rules or 10 rules of composition. It's happening inside my head because I've been doing it so long. So the first thing I wanna, uh, encourage you is the more you do this, the, the better you get at it. Now I see a lot of photographs um, that come through and I see a lot of really bad mistakes. And so I think it's something that you should take aware of, be aware of, and you know, sort of like maybe refresh yourselves. And that um, ebook that I have for you guys to download for free is a good idea to keep that and then maybe refer to it. I sit on an airplane a lot or I'll sit in a, you know, somewhere I've just got some time to think. It wouldn't, uh, it would probably be a good idea just for you to go and maybe flip through and remind yourself of what, um, um, what different things out there as you're building your images that you can go and, re and remind yourself to remember. Um, all right, stick with your intuition. Don't be swayed by the critics. I got a lot of criticism early on when I, uh, about 15, no, about maybe 12, 13 years ago when I started doing a lot of really in your face bold portraits, dead center. I, oh, you would believe how many people would email me or whatever and just try to shred me saying, you can't center your subjects. Well, I stuck with my guns and I've been doing, I still love doing it. And so if you come up with something that you say, I really like this, and someone says, uh, you, you know, you're not using the rule of thirds or whatever, don't worry about it. Um, I've sat through critiques, um, or I've critiqued and sat through critiques, and there's a lot of people who think they know everything, and they're going to try to tell you you did something wrong. If, if it's good criticism, it'll sink in, and you'll apply it in the future. But if you really love something, like I said, don't be afraid to stick with your gun. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on what I call uh, some basic uh, rules of composition. Um, I hope it encourages you. And don't forget to, if you feel like uh, liking this video and, um, you know, leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys. In fact, that gives me a sort of an, uh, sort of a, I guess an insight of what you guys are thinking and what I can build for you guys for future uh, tutorials. I love doing this. I love teaching and I hope to see you soon.